I've been using the Google Pixel 6a for about five days. I've been using the Google Pixel 6 for about five months. And the first thing that you guys need to know when comparing these two devices is that the screen on the Google Pixel 6a is more versatile. Now, what I mean by that, it's brighter. And so if you're not someone that needs a high refresh rate display, you're definitely going to enjoy the screen of the Google Pixel 6a more, especially if you're someone that likes to get outside. Hey, it's Mitchell. I'm fluent in tech, so you don't need to be. And I promise I'm going to be testing both of these devices more. I'm just on vacation right now. Don't have a desktop computer with me to edit videos on. But the second thing that you guys are going to want to know between the Google Pixel 6a and the Google Pixel 6 is that the performance on these two devices is almost identical. Using the devices back to back, user experience, all of the features that I know and love about the Google Pixel 6 are found and present on the 6a. Uh, multitasking for the most part and handling apps is identical on both of these devices. Really, the only place that I see much of a difference in performance is with multitasking, like a lot of apps at one time. But we don't have any issues with Google Play services or any of the other features and things that are core to making the Google Pixel 6 a great experience uh, lacking on the Google Pixel 6a. You can expect to have, I would say, 80% the same user experience, which is excellent at the $450 price point. Let's talk about reception and connectivity. Now I'm using the Pixel 6 on AT&T here in the States, the Pixel 6a on Google Fi, and the reception is quite good. In fact, I would be willing to say that the reception with Google Fi on the 6a is better and more stable than that than AT&T on my Google Pixel 6. That might have to do with the carrier difference, but in general, I found connectivity on the 6a to be excellent. No problems whatsoever. Now, if you guys are enjoying this video, you might want to think about giving it a subscribe and a like because when I go back to Vietnam, I'm going to have more in-depth testing side to side uh, for things like the camera performance and uh, more scientific testing of the battery charging performance. But my estimation of the battery charge and performance, like the speed of it all, is that the chassis of the Google Pixel 6a is the limiting factor. What I mean by that is that because it's a smaller phone, it thermal, it heats up faster and thermal soaks faster, whereas the Google Pixel 6 is a little bit larger. I don't really notice much of a difference in the extra five or six watts that the Pixel 6 has over the Pixel 6a. I just noticed that the Pixel 6a gets warmer when both of the devices are outside of their case charging at their maximum wattage, which on the 6 is like 23 or 24 watts with a 33 watt PPS charger and 18 watts with USB-C power delivery on the Google Pixel 6a. Now just one issue I want to bring up is that when I programmed my right thumbprint to use with the Pixel 6a, my left thumbprint was able to open it. Now I couldn't get any of my other fingerprints to open it, but it goes without saying that it seems like Google's algorithm for their in-display fingerprint scanner has been more geared towards speed of operation, not security. I got a feeling Google's gonna tweak this a little bit in uh, future software updates. They definitely made the fingerprint scanner of the Google Pixel 6 a lot better, more reliable, and it doesn't have any issues with thumbprints getting confused but I wanted to talk to you guys about that. Talking about cameras, I thought I would film this portion on the Google Pixel 6a. This is the ultra wide 1080p video. Just because I have to edit this on a phone, I'm not gonna test 4K out right now. I will when I get home, I promise guys. But I found that the camera performance on the 6a to be very comparable to the 6, with the caveat that the Google Pixel 6 has about a stop to three quarters of a stop difference of performance in low light. That's photography sense for the unit of measurement, measurement that we use for measuring exposure. Uh, the Pixel 6 is just slightly like 15%, 25% better in low light. Um, in daylight, like bright, well lit environments, the camera performance on these two is nearly identical. I don't know that you would be able to find much of a difference in the dynamic range of the 6 
over the 6a because so much of both of these cameras is reliant on the computational processing that goes into the photos video wise we have the same features on the pixel 6a as we do on the 6 so you can expect the same great 4k 30 video on both of the cameras and the main sensor is going to give you 4k 60 but tell me how the stabilization is right now on the 6a so what can you take away from this well if you're on a budget and you liked the Google Pixel device you had before, you're gonna get all of the same like great details that make the Google Pixel 6 and 6 Pro such an awesome device to use on your Pixel 6a. The only caveat to this is that it will charge a little bit slower. It will also more likely than not have slightly worse low light camera performance. And that's about it. And honestly, if you're not someone that requires a high refresh rate to play, the Pixel 6a is a lot of what I love about the Google Pixel at a cheaper price point. Till next time, peace.